It's impossible to know the full history of an archaeological artifact just from looking at it. In some cases, it's not even possible to understand its full history even after studying it and looking for historical context. Whenever that happens, you're left with a mystery on your hands. We're a big fan of those mysteries, and we know you are too. Let's take a look at some of the most outstanding examples. In March 2014, the world's oldest crown went on display to the general public for the first time, more than 50 years after it was first discovered. The crown was found in 1961 in a cave in the Judean desert and is believed to be 6,000 years old. It's one of more than 400 items that were found within the cave, which is thought to have been used as the burial place of a great ruler. The collection is now known as the Nahal Mishar Hoard, and the crown is the finest artifact among it. It's an elaborately decorated piece of headgear, featuring representations of vultures protruding from the top of its thick copper band. Given the age of the crown, the quality of the craftsmanship that went into making it is outstanding, featuring evidence of several techniques that were once thought to be beyond the people of the time. Sadly, despite the best efforts of many academics and researchers, it hasn't yet been possible to identify the ruler's name. It's possible that while their grave goods have survived for 6,000 years, their identity has been lost to history. Not every ancient tomb that's opened in Egypt turns out to be full of ancient wonders, but those that are tend to be spectacular. In May 2018, a 3,300-year-old tomb was opened in Saqqara. Archaeologists say that it's the tomb of a high-ranking general and contains information about an ancient war. Hieroglyphic inscriptions on the walls of the tomb identify the tomb's occupant to be Iria, a high army general, high steward of the domain of Amun, and high steward of the estates of Ramses II. The tomb is large and sprawling, containing many rooms, including chapels, statue rooms, and multiple forecourts. One sandstone block shows an infantry unit complete with charioteers crossing a crocodile-infested waterway on the eastern border of Egypt, while another shows mooring boards carrying loads of Canaanite wine jars. It's likely that the images and inscriptions tell the story of Irawa's entire military career, which began under Seti I before continuing during the time of Ramses II. Much of the information is new to historians and is still being studied almost four years after the tomb was opened. In 2014, a 91-year-old Christian missionary named Don Miller died at his rural farmhouse in Indiana, USA. After receiving an anonymous tip-off, the FBI raided his home. What they found there shocked them. Don was hoarding tens of thousands of ancient artifacts in his basement, including the bones of more than 500 Native Americans. It took more than five years to completely catalog the artifacts, of which there are over 40,000. Don was known to have been an amateur archaeologist, but nobody knew how far he'd taken his hobby. He was also a very eccentric man, who often claimed to have been involved in the Manhattan Project, which wasn't true. The majority of the archaeological treasures he was holding on to had been either smuggled or looted. It's likely that he took the Native American bones from sacred burial sites, and nobody knows why. His family say that in his final years, he wanted to find a way to return his artifacts to their rightful owners. The FBI is still trying to get that done now. They've set up a special website for anyone who wants to look at the collection and invite anybody who believes they have a genuine claim on the artifacts to get in touch. In the collection of the Met Museum in New York, USA, you'll find an oracle figure by the name of Kafi Galejo. The figure is humanoid in shape, but the question of who or what it's supposed to represent is one that doesn't have a definitive answer. Experts aren't even totally sure how old it is. Their best guess is that it was created by the Senufo people of the Ivory Coast. In the language of the Senufo people, the word Kafi Galejo means he who speaks the truth. Modern-day Senufu people say that it may have been used by their ancestors during trials as a means of trying to determine when somebody was lying. 
But like the historians and archaeologists who've tried to research it, they're just guessing. Some of the more superstitious people who've inspected the artifact up close say that it makes them feel anxious in a way that they struggle to put into words. The best guess of experts is that the figure is approximately 200 years old, but their efforts to find out more are hampered by the artifact's uncertain provenance. Nobody knows where it was before it was donated to the museum by A. Raymond and Laura Wilgus of Chicago in 1964. Archaeologists in Scotland began a lengthy excavation of the Aberdeen Bypass between Balmedy and Tipperty in 2018, and they've made some incredible discoveries. They've been able to prove that humans have been settled in the area for at least 15,000 years. Among the finds is a 15,000-year-old settlement made up of roundhouses, Mesolithic era burial pits, a cremation complex of uncertain age, and bread ovens created by the Romans. The Roman discoveries are the most surprising, as historians didn't know the Romans had ever come this far, and have no record of a Roman camp in this area. The presence of a whole 90 bread ovens, though, suggests that whatever military presence the Roman army had here wasn't a small one. The single most impressive find, though, is a fully intact beaker pot discovered at Mill Timber, which is around 4,000 years old, and one of only a handful that have ever come out of the ground unbroken. There's even evidence of a large stone tool production facility in the area around 13,000 years ago. Archaeologists had no idea any of this was here, and the full history of the region is now being rewritten. A shipwreck is a good place to go looking for ancient artifacts, which is precisely what the Israeli Antiquities Authority did in December 2021. They dived down to two ancient shipwrecks off the country's Mediterranean coast and were rewarded with the discovery of a whole treasure trove of medieval coins along with an ancient Roman gemstone ring. The location is close to the ancient city of Casaria, and the discoveries range in age from 600 to 1,700 years. Pieces of the ships were also recovered from the wrecks, including bells, nails, and a badly broken iron anchor. The ring is arguably the most outstanding artifact from the hall. It's stunningly well-preserved and features a green gemstone complete with an engraving of a shepherd carrying a sheep on his shoulders. It's a symbol known as the Good Shepherd and is one of the earliest widely used symbols of Christianity. While the origin of the 600-year-old wreck is unknown, it's highly likely that the 1,700-year-old wreck was on its way to Casaria from Italy at the time of its sinking. Part of the wreck is still buried beneath sand at the bottom of the sea, so there might be more to find if the sand can be cleared. One of the many unfortunate side effects of Western military action in Iraq in the past few decades is that countless archaeological treasures were looted by soldiers and taken to either the United Kingdom or the United States of America. One of them was the 3,500-year-old Gilgamesh tablet, which was finally returned to Iraq in September 2021. It had been seized from billionaire David Green by the U.S. Justice Department in 2019. Prior to that, it had been on display in the Washington Museum of the Bible. The Gilgamesh tablet, also sometimes known as the Gilgamesh Dream tablet, is so named because the inscriptions on its surface tell the story of a dream sequence from the Gilgamesh epic. The language used is an Akkadian cuneiform script. According to experts from UNESCO, this is one of the oldest religious texts in the world. The Epic of Gilgamesh was the inspiration for a whole series of Sumerian epic poems about Gilgamesh, who's a mythical king and hero similar to King Arthur of England. There are thought to be 17,000 looted Iraqi treasures in America, all of which will hopefully find their way back home one day. Human beings have been in love with music ever since they worked out how to create it. We now think that some of the earliest melodies ever written were created on bone flutes. That theory is based on the discovery of a pair of bird bone and mammoth ivory flutes that were found in a cave in southern Germany in 2012. By using carbon dating techniques, scientists have been able to prove that the flutes are a little over 42,000 years old. 
As such, they're the oldest known musical instruments in the world. The cave, which is called Geisen Kloisterla, is already well known among archaeologists after turning up ancient ornaments and figurative art in years gone by. The discovery of so many artifacts inside the cave is consistent with the theory that the Danube River was the most important corridor for humans arriving in Central Europe between 40 and 45,000 years ago. We'll never know what the tunes our ancient ancestors played on these bone flutes sounded like, but we can look at them as proof of a developing and recognizable arts and culture scene all those years ago. A standard dice used in gaming has six sides. A more complex one of the kind that might be used in specialist board games might have 8, 10, or 12 sides. That would be considered small fry by the ancient Egyptians, who frequently created 20-sided dice for reasons we can't explain. One of the best preserved examples of the dice is on display at the Met Museum in New York and is thought to be about 2,200 years old. The shape of the dice is correctly known as an icosahedron, and it's made from serpentine. Rather than being used for games, historians think that the dice were alphabet oracles used for divination when the in-person services of a seer or oracle weren't available. On the other hand, we know that the Egyptians played a board game called Senet, which is vaguely similar to backgammon and was known to be a favorite of many pharaohs. The dice could have been used in that game. The most likely place to find 20-sided dice today is as part of a Dungeons & Dragons game. So if you're one of the many people who enjoy Dungeons & Dragons, you now know that your favorite game has a loose connection to the Egypt of 2,000 years ago. The freezing cold conditions of the Altai Mountains aren't hospitable, but they're very good at preserving anything that's left behind or buried there. To support that statement, we present these 2,300-year-old boots. They're in such good condition and have retained so much of their original color and intricate decorations that they look almost as if they were made within the past decade. The leather boots, wrapped in red cloth, were found inside the tomb of a Scythian woman in the Siberian region of the Altai Mountains in 1948. The tomb also contained the woman's jewelry, clothes, weapons, and even some food provisions. The construction of the tomb was complicated. The Scythians started by digging a deep hole, then creating a structure like a log cabin at the bottom of the hole to serve as a tomb before topping it with dark felt, birch bark, moss, and larch. That's a high degree of complexity for a people who are often dismissed as nomadic warriors. They had no written language, but the writings of the Greeks and the Persians make it clear that they were greatly feared by the cultures around them. Herodotus once wrote that nobody who attacks them can hope for victory, and nobody can find them if they don't want to be found. We'd like to think we'd be able to spot them if they all wore clothes as bright as these boots. The wooden structure that was found in the Czech Republic in February 2020 might not seem like much to look at, but that's only until you hear its age and its purpose. It's a well, and it's 7,000 years old. That makes it the oldest surviving wooden structure in the world. Tests that have been carried out on the oak used in the well's construction have indicated that it comes from a tree that was felled in the year 5,256 BCE. The only reason it survived for this long is because it spent most of the past 7,000 years underwater. Now it's exposed to the air again, it's in grave danger of disintegration. While they're trying to come up with a more permanent method of preservation, experts have used sugar to reinforce the well's cellular structure. The precision of the well has surprised experts. Its base is perfectly square and measures exactly 32 inches by 32 inches. That seems to confirm that these Neolithic era people had a system for counting and measuring. The tool marks on the surface of the oak timbers were made by someone with advanced carpentry skills. It seems that we've yet again underestimated the capabilities of our ancestors. It used to be said that wine improved with age, although scientists are increasingly sure that this isn't true. If it were, the contents of the Spire wine bottle would still be drinkable. This is the oldest unopened bottle of wine in the world, 
and was discovered in the German town of Speyer in 1867, hence its name. The wax seal is both airtight and watertight, so it's still protecting the contents of the bottle as efficiently as it has been for the last 1,600 years. The Spire wine bottle was found inside the tomb of a Roman legionary, and so it must have been a funerary offering. There were six bottles inside the tomb, but only this one has survived intact. Scientists have considered opening the seal and testing the liquid inside it, but they're worried about the implications of exposing it to the air. There are some experts who believe that the condition of the wine looks worse than it is, and that the liquid is probably still drinkable. But it would take either a very brave or very stupid person to try. Still, we can probably all think of somebody who'd give it a go. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you soon!